Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about head down, part three. This gelding is a little bit faster, a little bit rushy, and we use head down to teach him not only to start gating, because he's very pacey, but also to help him slow down. So we're gonna talk a little bit about speed control in this video, how speed control comes before softness and head down, meaning, I won't let a horse go so fast, it, as fast as they want, without slowing them down. It's your job as the rider to control the speed. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at this horse. If you haven't seen part one and two, please go back and watch these before you watch this video. Links will be included, but it's just very important. There's a lot of information to cover and one video doesn't explain everything. Now, this video was taken in 2000. And 18 so it is a few years old uh, you'll see me start with the bit that the horse is used to using and then we will switch and you'll be able to see if there's any difference or not all right so day one of a clinic um, yeah we, I forgot to cut it up so we skipped the part where I'm actually getting on but you get to see this is the first time that I get on this horse and so the benefit of that is because I'm gonna ask him to, you know, show us how he moves, which he walked off right away. That's all right. He stood nicely enough for me to get on. Uh, now you can see he has, I'm not sure what bit it is. It looks like it's similar to like the Robart bit. Um, it's just a shanked bit and not one I'm a fan of. But I'll be, and he was, and so the rider is interesting because the rider usually rides him with his head high pulling his nose in and going fast, but he doesn't gate. How a lot of people have been taught that's how you ride horses is, you know, pull their heads up, bring their noses in and kick them to go. Well, it didn't work for this guy at all. He was just pacey, 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 and he was just fast and hot. Uh, and you can see even his walk, he didn't want to walk. Um, and so you can see he's very pacey. He's doing almost a dead pace. It's not very comfortable. The The rider thought it was pretty good, but I, it's just pacey. And you can see he's it's, it's not that he's not controllable, but he's just very, very fast and not wanting to slow down and re and not relaxing. When I get on a horse, the first right when I get first get on, without any warm-up, the horse should be able to walk on a loose rein. Uh, this guy, you know, I'd have to have contact and ask him to slow down. So what I'm going to start with, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have him pace more, but I'll be asking him, so I have contact on my reins, and I'm asking him to soften, and we talked about that in the previous video, but head down comes from asking the horse to give their nose, and then you release. You don't hold contact till they put their head down. You hold contact until they soften, and then you release. And I don't pull hard, and I don't jerk. I'm just looking for that softness. And then you see that drape in the reins? I give a totally loose rein. Now, I don't know how much that I stop and praise, but hopefully I do a lot. There the horse gave his nose and I release. Now look at the horse is already walking a little better. Still fast, still wants to speed up. And this is where speed control comes. Let's say you have a faster horse. If your horse is faster, it's your job to make sure that they walk or stay in a slow pace. That was a really nice give there. I probably should have stopped and praised. At this point, this has been three and a half years ago, I didn't do as much stopping and praising. So I'm gonna be commenting on those times where I should have stopped and praised. There was a release and I there's drape in the reins as I let go. Most likely what will happen is we'll do this, ask for the softness, then you'll release and the horse will start to drop his head. But then I'm gonna ask for him to speed up and he's gonna go fast. And it's my job to say, st to say with my reins, stay slow. And then I will pull harder till he slows down and then I will give him a soft contact. That was really nice there, really good release. Again, it's a good place to stop and praise. Again, I'm, I was still learning, this is a few years ago, but I wanted you guys to see this faster horse. Light contact, there he softened, and I released the reins. And again, remember, it's not about him dropping his head. If you hold the reins until the horse drops his head, one, it may never happen, and so you'll end up holding the reins a really long time, and two, the horse will learn to pull his head down and pull the reins out of your hand, which we don't want. So here's stop, um, and I give him a, a loose rein, and if you also put his head down, that's fantastic. So the reins are a little short for him um, with his reins. 
uh, I like long reins so the horse can put their head down without you having to lean far forward. One alternative to that is, is to put it like a tie or a grab strap at the end of your reins, which is six to a foot long, six inches to a foot long, that you can grab if the horse drops his head, say to drink or eat. You can have shorter reins, but still not have to lean forward. So at this point, I'm just asking for that head to soften and drop. And as you watch him, start to go back and review video one for lifting the base of, of the neck. And you'll start to see when he goes from pushing the base of the neck down to when he actually starts to lift and have that elongated muscle. Because again, as we watch him now, see that top line is very short because his head is up high. But as he starts to drop, it lengthens and the top part gets longer, which is what we want. And you see me give a lot, look at him walk now. And it's been only, you know, like five minutes and he's already walking on a loose rein. And all we did, we didn't make him rush. We didn't move his hindquarters around. All we did was say, can you put your head down? Can you soften? Specifically, can, when I pick up the reins, will you soften? And he's yawning, which means he's releasing tension and he's stretching down. Now you see how long that top line is compared to the underneath, the bottom line the, of his neck, the bottom of his neck. Again, refer to video one for lifting the base of the neck. And I give long breaks. I tell people, count to 60. Go 60 seconds or longer for your stop and praise. Not that you can never stop for a shorter amount of time, but generally it's good. They need to breathe. They might need to yawn. And sometimes they need that time. Sometimes I'll stand there until the horse actually either gives me a sign of relaxation. They yawn, they lick and chew, they blink, they take a deep breath, they pass gas, something. And then we continue on. So notice the head goes right up. So I have very light contact and I'm looking for that horse to tuck the nose, which he just did. And then I release the reins. So you'll, you'll know the horse tucks his head because you'll see me drop the reins like that. He did it right there. Loose rein. If the head stays low, I don't touch the reins. If that head starts to come up, then I gently pick up on my reins, both reins. And as soon as he softens, I release. As soon as he softens, holding contact, wanting him to soften, not just put his head down because his head is staying high but I want him to soften his nose and then I will release and then I'll keep give I'll give him a loose rein on and I'll keep it loose until the head comes up and at the beginning right it came up right away and now after about five minutes he's starting to keep it level now I would love to see him stretch all the way down to the ground you know that eating dirt low or eating dirt low is how low I want to see him at the walk especially but because it's a really good stretch for the horse's back again we're, we're not just getting head down because we want it. We do head down for a couple reasons. One, because it's so good for them to use their back and lift their back. And two, it helps them relax. As we're seeing here, we had a horse that wouldn't even walk off, is starting to walk on a loose rein. Now, when we speed up, it'll be a different story. But for now, this is huge progress. And again, the lower the horse's head, the more engaged they are now. We don't want them to keep it down low because we don't want them to just be on their forehand but we need them to go low enough that they elongate the neck and use their back and their hind end. And if you were to look at the video at the beginning, see how he's walking and he's actually, when he puts his, not now, because now he's taking short little steps so you can compare it. When he puts his head down, he starts to really step farther under with the hind end. So if you're looking for your horse to step farther under with their hind end, you need to look and see how high the head is. And you might need more energy or you might just need to get that head a little bit lower. So I hold light contact with both reins and I'm not looking for the head to go down. I'm looking for him to soften his nose. And when he does, I release. And that's usually when he drops his head. Now, if he doesn't drop his head, like right there, he didn't. I immediately take up contact again and hold until they release. And as soon as they release, I drop the reins. And it is on the release that most horses drop their head. That's nice. See, you can see compared to the beginning of the video, he's walking much slower. But still, when I put contact on the reins, he still likes to speed up. Now, again, I would rather have this horse in a snaffle than a shanked bit um, is my preference to do this training. Um, but because he was very forward, it is unlikely that the owner is going to switch to a snaffle for all the training. Now, one thing you can do is do this training in the snaffle. And then when you go for a ride you put your shanked bit, whatever you're using, back on the horse to stay safe because I don't want anybody switching to a snaffle and having the horse totally run through. So there he's softening, there I release. Now he stretches down a little bit. Um, I'm keeping my legs off of him. You can see 
my legs are far from his sides uh, as I'm making sure not to cue him to rush. Um, there's a bit of tail swishing, but I think it's just because I'm asking a lot. So there, he did start to drop his head. Now again, I'm going to point out that I should have stopped and praised. So this has been about eight minutes. I probably should have stopped and praised at least eight times in there. Um, I just didn't stop and praise enough. And again, this was about three and a half years ago, and I didn't know to stop and praise quite as much as I do now. So now I would stop and praise way more. Stop and let him rest, stop and let him think. He stands very nicely, which is normal actually. When you start doing the relaxation, the head down, it's normal for horses, whether they stood well or not before, it's normal for them to start standing very nicely. So to recap, it's about controlling the speed, which we're gonna talk about more in this video. And it's also about asking for the release, asking for them to tuck their nose, and right there he did it, giving him a loose rein. But if you have a high-headed horse, you're going to have to do it a lot. You're going to have to ask for softness, you're going to release, and then that head's going to come back up and you're immediately going to take up contact. And again, you don't hold the contact until the head goes down, you hold it until they soften. Holding the light contact, should have contact on both reins. I think I asked him to speed up here to show you guys. So yeah, he's pacing. I'm asking him to soften and maintain the faster speed. So he's just pacing or stepping pace, and I'm asking very, very light contact. Keep going, but not go too fast. So what you're seeing is this balance of he wants to go, 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 and he's happy to, but I want to maintain a slow speed, a little bit of a flat walk there. You can see that head nod, and then he's doing a stepping pace. So, and that head's coming up. What I want is I want him to go forward, but I don't want him to go too fast, and I use my reins to say, don't go so fast. And he, that was pretty good, so I'll stop and praise again. Stop and praise frequently. I'd rather you stop and praise more than less. So I believe this part I'm going to switch bits. Um, I'm going to skip ahead because I'll probably just putting my bridle on. Okay, so we have switched to the McGregor releasing bit, uh, which is my bit. And I, I just want to make sure that it wasn't the bit making him uncomfortable because sometimes it is. So you'll notice if there's a difference after a few minutes here, if, if the horse is better or if the bit made no difference. Because sometimes there's no difference at all because I'm not trying to sell you just my tack. Uh, if you don't need to buy anything, if you don't need to buy a bit, then don't. So again, we're walking and I'm asking him to soften. And he seems to be softening a little easier. It's always hard to tell right at the beginning unless the horse puts their head way down. So as soon as he speeds up, he puts his head up. And again, the reason he does that is he has a muscle memory. The, the balance is for him to go fast with his head up. That's where the muscles are the strongest. And for him to put his head down changes and he has to use his core and his hind end and his back. And so if those muscles haven't been developed, that's going to be harder for him. A lot of people ask, you know, why doesn't the horse just gait? And part of it is, it could just be harder for him to gate than it is to pace or to trot. And our goal is to help with that, is to get them better. And I want to show you this beginning unbroken. You're seeing everything except I skipped when I bridled him. Uh, so you see how he's going fast? So I'm pulling on the reins just to slow him down. And once he slows down, he is starting to put his head down. So that was really beautiful. And I'll stop and praise. I do think he likes this bit a little better, even though he's chewing. Uh, it has, it's j a little gentler than the one he had in. Um, there's a little more give to it. You see how the bit, it has the bottom part wings back. That makes bits more gentler than if they're more straight or with just a slight curve like his bit was. But again, when I'm riding him, the most important part is to do the work at this faster speed. So you do it at the walk till the horse knows it. And again, I, I speed things up because I'm at a clinic. I would probably only do head down three or four days with this horse and not, and not do a lot of go faster until they got it at the walk. But you have to speed them up, keep them slow, and ask for that softness while they go forward. Because most likely, if you speed a horse up and you put a little bit of contact on the reins, they're going to slow down. Then just use your legs and your voice a little and speed them up with your legs and keep them going, but don't let them go too fast. And that's what's so important here is you see me asking him to go forward, 
but I don't let him just rush around and we don't use the whole arena. You notice we're still on a circle. That's really important. Go on a circle. It helps you control the speed and softness. Now, look at that. Now, he put his head up, but right at the beginning, he had a much better balance and he's putting it down a lot faster. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. Now, again, I don't want him just to speed up on his own. I want to speed him up and I think I asked him there to speed up. And when his head goes down, you start to see this really nice gate come through, but then his head comes right back up. So that's normal because remember, he has the muscle memory of head up and he wants to speed up. So you see me kind of pulling hard to slow him down because I don't want him to go faster. It's a nice head down, but I don't want him to go faster than a slow pace or gait at this point. And he wants to go fast. So you'll see me pulling here and not because I want him there, we're just gonna stop, but I want him to maintain that slow speed. And that's something you'll have to work with. And that's what's important is speed is more important than softness and head down. If you ask your horse to speed up and they're flying around, slow them down before you even think about asking for softness. They need to maintain a slow speed, whether that's trot, pace, gait, you know, stepping pace, all of that needs to be slow and then you can continue the training. And I, this is kind of one of the best horses I have to show because he, he likes to go fast when you give him a loose rein. And you're going to see uh, in the future on day three when I ask him to speed up and I slow him down and I give him a little loose rein. And then the head comes up and I take up contact and then I give him a loose rein. And if we were to keep doing this training for about two weeks, we'd start seeing this horse just gate on a lo completely loose rein. That's nice head down. And my reins slide through my hands as he puts his head down. Let him put that head down. Now there he wants to speed up, so I'm pulling to slow down. So I, then I say speed up, but not that fast. And it goes like this. Um, most of the training sessions, the first couple are, he wants to speed up, I say slow down. There he's speeding up, I say slow down, then I give him a loose rein, now slow down. And then slow down. And then once he starts to be more consistent, then I have just very light contact. You see me pulling pretty hard. That's not to get the nose in. That's just to control the speed. Again, speed control comes first. And it's super important because that does come up. Now that's much nicer. And then he sped up. But it was a lot better. And I want to stop and praise for that. Now I'm doing better about stopping and praising now than I was earlier. Okay, so you guys can see that. I'm going to skip around a little bit. I'm going to skip ahead uh, because we, you know, I'm trying to keep these videos at 20 minutes. So same day, here's, here's the same horse. This is like, you know, a few minutes later. We didn't hide anything. We didn't put any, we didn't change any tack. Just asking him to maintain. That's a nice little gate right there. I should have stopped and praised right there. And then he sped up around the corner. Again, that's a much nicer gate when he has his head down and then he likes to speed up and you see me pull. You see me pull, which is important because I don't want him to speed up. So I'm going to slow him down. That's my job as a rider to keep him slow. And then after that, it's his job. That's a nice little gate before his head comes up. Ask him to slow down there. Look at that. That is beautiful. Uh, and honestly, <laughs> I, I would end there if I had a choice. So usually we do an hour long lesson. That might be 30 minutes. It might be 10 minutes. And I would just quit there. Um, and I want to watch it, watch day three. So you can see the gating that this horse does. So I'm just going to do this. This is day three. We're still using, we're using the horse's bit now, not the McGregor releasing bit and uh, riding on the driveway. And you're going to watch again, watch my hands, watch how much I ask for head down and then I release and then I ask and then I release and she got longer reins which is excellent make sure your reins aren't too short I didn't talk about that in the first video you have to be able to comfortably let the horse put his head all the way down without bumping his mouth and that usually means 10 foot reins but some horses need longer and some because they have shorter necks they don't need as long and if the horse is taller definitely don't have too short of reins okay so I'm just talking let's skip ahead okay here we go so here's me riding the horse same thing keeping the speed slow, asking for head down. I'm going to try not to hold the horse in gait, but if that head comes up, I'll immediately ask. So I ask him to speed up. He wants to put his head up and speed up, so I slow him down, but it was a nice couple of steps. So I'm doing lots of stop and praise. I'm just skipping ahead a little bit. There you go. 
So look at how low that head is. And now it's a little pacey because it's a little fast. So I slowed him down. Yes, that's really nice. That's day three. So you, I don't have any footage from day two of this horse, but you can clearly see the progress. And all we did was work on head down and speed control. That was very nice. And you can already see his head go lower. He's more willing to walk and not rush. Skip ahead. So this is another exercise, I'll just leave it here, that I do, and you're gonna see me do it. If the horse knows head down and gets a little pacey, um, if they don't know how to leg yield, what I'll do is I'll back them up and start again. And we're not going to talk about that a lot, um, but you're just going to see it here. So I'm going to ask him to go forward. I'm going to ask him to gate. He's going to pace. He's got his head a little lower, but he's doing a stepping pace. So I stop him and we back up. And after a few steps, we immediately go forward because... The backup can help them get that hind end under them and set them up to go into gate. Um, yes, and that was better. But it, it got worse when his head was up, but it started out nice. So I want to stop and praise because it started out really, really nice. So uh, let's see. And then they have the owner riding. But uh, anyway, so I wanted you guys to see the progress that this horse made and what I had to do because speed control is very important. And again, it's really important that I want you to hear that you release when the horse softens and you don't hold that contact until the head goes down because then they end up pulling the reins out of your hand. So that's day three of this video, of, of, of the head down series. Make sure you watch day one and two and please comment if you have any questions and I know you can do it. You got this.